statues. The playgroup meet on weekday mornings in Mrs. Smithers' barn. With two girl helpers, she provides a haven, safe from harm. The twenty children have a ball, they romp and sleep and play until their parents pick them up at twelve o'clock each day. One of their most favorite games is statues, such a thrill. They dance until the music stops, then halt and stand quite still. The first of them, that's seen to move, is out and leaves the game. And then the music starts again, and so on, just the same. For Halloween she dresses them as fairies and as gnomes, they look so cute in tiny hats. With booties made of foam, they've tiny tunics, pale green tights. And wings of wire and gauze, she smiles upon them playing there. It's for such a good cause, they have a game of statues then, the fairies and the gnomes. Music playing, standing still, before they leave for home. There's always one that's left behind, whose mum is running late. He's looking anxious, insecure, left standing by the gate. That evening, when the sun goes down, the trick-or-treaters come. They knock at all the houses there, look for a bit of fun. They call it Mrs. S's house, they do most every year. She gives them smiles and lots of sweets, she likes the kids, that's clear. And going down the garden path, they count up all her gnomes. She has a new one every year, to decorate her home. This year's one appears quite sad. He looks a bit forlorn. As if his mum's abandoned him, to sit here on this lawn. She's given him a fishing rod, and brightly painted face. But she can't cover up the tears, and not leave just a trace. The gnomes are all her little boys, kept frozen, in their youth. They'll never grow a fine mustache, or gain an adult tooth. They watch in silent brotherhood, as children run and play. She brings them in as nights turn cold, and puts them out each day. She'll touch their paint up every year, and keep them looking smart. Until at last, the plaster rots, and breaks them all apart.